Uh, my name is Trey Hobbs, former professional baseball player, current teacher slash entrepreneur. You're now tuning in with the debut. This episode of The Debut is sponsored by Unheard, a platform for artists to showcase their talents. Book your live music performance today. What does an entrepreneur mean to me? Uh, to be honest, I don't know, bro, because uh, how I became an entrepreneur, I was just bored at the house one day and just said, forget it, bro. I'm going to just start selling clothes, doing my own clothing line. So it really means a lot to me, though. It's just something I could keep doing. Once I'm committed to something, I just keep on doing it. So I don't know. That's, that's about it. What really made me gravitate towards clothes, like I said, I was bored, but we don't have many male I wouldn't say boutiques because it's like, I guess it's like a female thing, but it's a lot of female boutiques. So I don't know, it's just, we need something for the fellas. Uh, honestly, I make time for it, honestly. Because uh, if I'm committed to something, like I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just keep doing it. I mean, I get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to work in Clarksdale, because I teach there. But when I get off, get off usually around five o'clock, from that time to like 11 o'clock, I'm working. I gotta get the next thing out. Uh, how, does my, how much does my environment play a part into what I do? Your environment or weed? Where to begin with? I'm from the south side of Greenville. Book of Town's finest, that's me. Nah. But you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, I seen a lot of crazy stuff growing up, bro, but you know, it ain't about staying in the hood man it's about getting out so i try to do what i do to get the younger generation to like oh he from the south side of greenville he did this he did that he he damn successful at doing it so maybe i inspire those that's under me to follow my footsteps or even maybe maybe even be better some of my future goals as an entrepreneur um uh, honestly I'm a sneakerhead, so I want to come out with my own sneaker, but it's not going to be like a Jordan prototype. I don't want it to be a Jordan prototype because a lot of people doing it. I don't want to be an Air Force One, but that's one of my future goals. And I try to, I'm trying this year to make 100K. So what I'm going to do to achieve that goal of making 100K? Working, man. I got to stay in the lab. <laughs> I gotta do what I do, man. Look, I can't slack, bro. It's a lot of it's a lot of things I want to do, like outside of just doing what I do every day. But I know at the same time, if I want to get to where I want to be, I got to do what it takes. What character trait makes my brand favorable? All right, so um, if you know me, they people say I'm a pretty boy. Well, how I came up with Suave Mente Apparel is smooth in Spanish. And how I can't know what protect your cash is you gotta protect your cash by all means. You can't let nobody knock you off your square, man. Hey. <laughs> how do I feel about music? Uh um, man, I come from a music background, man. Both of my grandma sing. Rest in peace, my grandma queen. My grandma better may still alive, but you know, I can actually sing myself and no, I'm not gonna sing on here. <laughs> but man, how I feel about music, especially in my area, bro, like if people will stop, we like crabs in a bucket where I'm from, bro. If we stop down pulling each other down, bro, we all could be at the top. Shit, like they said, I'm paid in full. Everybody eats, B. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the things I do, what are three things that I need on the basis? Food. <laughs> I don't know, man. I really don't need much, man. I'm a simple guy, bro. I'm a simple guy. I don't need much. All I need is what I need to get through the day. That's my embroidery machine, food, and sleep. I'm a napping ass dude, bro. <laughs> Out of all the things I accomplished, what am I most proud of? Signed a professional baseball contract in 2017. I used to tell everybody in my neighborhood what I was going to do. And I did that. Same amount of time and effort that I did as an athlete now that I'm doing as an entrepreneur. Yeah. 
Cause bro, when I was playing, when I was playing ball, it was like get up in the morning, go work out, go to the field at two for a seven o'clock game, and be there at like eleven o'clock. Sometimes we'll have to shower at the clubhouse and leave to go to like Pennsylvania or something, but. It is what it is. Just got to keep going. That motor just keep going. My ultimate goal in life? Man, to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't let being a millionaire just take over my life, bro. Because they say money is the root of all evil. But I can't let it take over me. I mean, if I got to sacrifice something to be a millionaire, shit, I just won't do it. I just be me, bro. Like, it is what it is. One similarity between being an athlete and a businessman, time and perfecting your craft. I definitely got to look at what I can and can't do because at the same time, you got to be realistic when you when you doing things because as an athlete, I can't go out there and bench 400 pounds and I know I'm 170 soaking wet. I mean, as an entrepreneur, I know I can't. I know I can't. Dang on. Okay, somebody just. I, I'll say. I'll put it like this. Somebody just drop some stack pants, and I turn around and say, "Oh, I'm gonna drop some stack pants too, just the same way he did it." No, bro. I gotta do something different. Something gotta be different in what I do. I gotta separate myself from other people. My biggest struggle. Honestly, it's not really a struggle. It just comes with business. It's just sometimes I have slow months. And it's just, it's irritating, but at the same time, I know what it is. It's just, it's just business, bro. Like, and then sometimes you get, you get people where, like, I'll post something. I'll post what it is in the caption, and then they'll come in the comments and ask me the same exact question. <laughs> <laughs> I try not, I try not to be an asshole, but bro, like they always said, if you put something in front of us, bro, we won't read it. it it's right there, I and mean, we won't read it, bro. Like oh, it's irritating, and I know how I am, so I just gotta keep how I am away from my business, bro. My most craziest moment. I ain't gonna lie, when I first got my first embroidery machine, I sat in my house for 13 hours and didn't get that shit right. <laughs> I kid you not, bro, I messed up like 50 t-shirts that day. I promise, <laughs> bro, I messed up like 50 t-shirts that day. I was like, you know what? I'm about to send this shit back. <laughs> but I was like, but at the same time, I was like, nah, bro, I didn't drop all this bread on this. I ain't no sending it back. It is what it is. I gotta make it shake somehow. Things that ins inspire my view on business. Bro, I, I, I be on Instagram a lot. I just look at these. I just look at these other businesses. And I'm just like, dang. Bro came from nothing. And now he doing it. But at the same time, I can't say I came from nothing. Because shit, I had, a great, I had a good mama. A good family all it. So I ain't going to cap like I came from nothing. But at the same time, I know I'm, I, where I come from, bro. I'm from the projects. I'm a project baby. I don't look like it, but you know, do my family and friends inspire what I drop? Honestly, yeah. To be honest, yep. Because I come from Booker Town. You know, Booker Town is you know that's a it's a player neighborhood. <laughs> so I, I drop the bunny on my I drop the bunny on my stuff. You know, it is what it is. I'm just gonna be honest about it. The most important lesson I learned from being a teacher. Um, Bro, you just you can't you gotta treat them kids how you want it to be treated, bro. Like I learned as a teacher that we have to adapt to these kids now because my generation, our generation, bro, them, them teachers was hard nosed, bro. Like because they knew we could handle it, but at the same time, these kids are a little bit softer than we are. So you gotta learn how to be relatable to them. You gotta. You got to know your kids, bro. You got to know your kids because you don't know what they're going through at home. And sometimes they just need that figure outside of home where it's just like, okay, I'm comfortable. Like, I know he ain't going to be nagging or doing all this and that. 
I don't know, bro. It's just, you just, I don't know. I don't know. Do you feel like, as a teacher, it's almost your obligation to be a mentor to your students? Or do you feel like that's something you just have to have in you as a teacher? Being a teacher, you gotta, you gotta be that mentor, bro. Like, because every day they see they see you more than they see their parents at home. So they looking at you like, okay, well, I want to be like him when I grow up. He respectable. He respect me. I respect him. He funny. Know they think about me. He dress nice. So when they see that type of stuff, man, they just be like, okay, well, I can take this away from Mr. Hobbs or Coach Hobbs. That's what they call me. But at the same time. I don't know. I don't know at the same time. Hardest project? Yeah. Shit, man. Me and Z Gravy, baby poop. We put that shit out, man. And if y'all missed that on, I don't know what to tell you. Cause that was that was a hard collab there. That, that was a hard collab. And I be wanting to do collab with other people around, but I know how people are, but so and I know how I am. I ain't got time for it. How did that collab come about? And what do you feel like made it feel like, hey, this is it? Like, cause you said yourself, you've been a lot of people, and it's like, hmm. well, what made Z like, hey, you know like, what you yeah. doing? Uh, what made that club come about? I actually, I actually pitched the idea to him. I was like, hey, bro, what you think about a collab? He was like, yeah, that's cool, blah blah blah. And I know he, he do his own fashion design, so. I know he would come over some. I said I would embroider it, and then you put your little touch on it. I was like, I don't care what you do, because that was his side of the thing, bro. Like I can't say, oh no, nah, do this, bro, do this. Nah, I know what I'm doing, so I let him do his thing, and then boom, it. He asked me, did I like it? I was like, bro, I don't care what it is, cause I'm aware. And if people see me and you wearing it, and they know we like to dress up and all that, they gonna like it too more than like it. Some of the people I looked up to, my mama. <laughs> That's my baby, man. My mama, my baby, bro. Like, she really like my best friend, but I'm 26 years old. She still be on my ass about some stuff. But my cousin Tutu, he really was supposed to go pro in baseball before I did. Like, I followed that man when I was like five years old. He's playing ball at TL. I used to run around with the helmet. He used to go knock on the door early in the morning. Cause I used to think he was my brother when I was little, but they had to tell me he was my cousin. But that's that's really about it. If I could do one thing to change the world, what would it be? I don't know. That's a, that's a deep question. One thing to change the world, what would it be? You messed me up with that question, bro. <laughs> oh, he messed me up with that question. One thing to change the world, honestly, bro, probably change the pay of law enforcement, first responders, teachers. And raise minimum wage, because that, that shit suck. Because Honestly, bro, if we live in, I live in Greenville, so it's not that bad for us. But at the same time, what person you, what teacher you know can live off thirty-five thousand dollars a year as a first-year teacher? What person you know can live off seven twenty-five a year? That, that just, I don't know. I just don't understand the world how that come about. But I, don't know. I, I would hate to be a president. In closing, what do you feel like? your mom and your friends would feel after watching this interview? Do you feel like they'll be like, that nigga crazy? Or would you feel like they'll be like, we proud of him, we're proud of him. How would they feel after this interview? They'll say both. They'll say I'm crazy and they proud of me. <laughs> they know how I am, bro. They know I don't, I don't care. I'm gonna say what I want to say. And it's just, that it just, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. All right, leave a, po a positive message. Never let what you've been through 
take away from where you're going. Uh, my name is Trey Hobbs, and I've been rocking with the debut. Who's All right. All right, it's Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright. <laughs> 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 oh no, bro. That shit funny, man. Nah, for real. Man, hold on. Nah, for real. Top three sneakers other than Jordan that you feel are pretty good. Top three sneakers other than Jordan? That I feel that's pretty good. Uh, Yeezys. Yeezys. See, people still sleep on Sakonis. I'm gonna say Sakonis. Yo, Sakonis. One more. People, people think it's a white person shoe, but Asics. 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 Yeah. What they look like, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Somebody do something. I'm going to say, yeah, it's going to jail. <laughs> the folks going to put you, the folks going to come in your life and pick you up. Your ass is going. <laughs>